So hey one, this is Lon here, back with some more videos and a video by Le Le Yo <laughs> Yay Lois <laughs> Le Yo sound like his evil twin. Oh god, so sorry for that. But yes, another video by J Law, which is Markiplier uh, biggest successing um, Let's Play series, Five Nights at Freddy's, and I butchered that title. I know, I'm sorry. And right off the bat, first of all, check out J Law if you don't do. They do amazing editing. I love their videos. Holy crap! And I just saw on Twitter today that they are working on another Pokemon battle between KSI and Logan Paul, which I think is going to be really, really... I'm really curious about that. And uh, yes, check him out, support him. Amazing character. Amazing character. Well, he is a character as well, I guess. But, you know, amazing person, a great creator. And now about this Markiplier. I mean, I'm pretty sure most of you that is watching me know about Markiplier. You know, being the, you know, Queen of Squirrels, Press B to Blow, E and whatnot, you know, all these memes around him. And he definitely rose to fame through Final Fantasy He was already a big channel before that. But the momentum from playing Final, F Final Fantasy, I, I don't even know what I'm talking about more anymore, guys. But from the moment he played Five Nights at Freddy's, it just really launched him, you know forward massively it, it, it you know it was the um, meteora to Linkin Park or something like that you know it, it was the big thing that really like, whee, they were really big but they, they just flew really high and I did know about I did watch Mark play before Finance of Freddy's and I actually really enjoyed watching his old videos. I don't watch him too much today. I do at times, you know. I at times have him in the background because I, I just think it's nice to have. And uh, also, I do say that Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, and Game Grumps are some of these people that I looked up to when I started with YouTube. They were and are still being inspirations for me many times. And I still think it's amazing to see how they just keep growing and... Uh, yeah, I genuinely just really, really like them. And Markiplier seemed to be a general shield dude. And also, it's kind of fun, because I don't know how many times people have mentioned that I sound like Markiplier, which I take as a compliment, because I really like Markiplier's voice and all of that. I don't personally think I sound like him. Then again, I mean, obviously, you know, that acoustic... I, I, I don't hear my, my, my voice vibrates in my skull. And uh, all of that, but yeah, seriously, it is, it's pretty fun, actually. But yes, sorry for blabbering and all of that, we are here to watch j -Lo's video on Markiplier. I am curious about this, I haven't watched this yet, as of this recording, so to say. So we, we can... Over the course of YouTube's history, we've seen time and time again that creating a successful YouTube series can cause a channel to explode. Whether that be a smaller channel or an already established channel, if you can ah, crack the market, dude. it can mean millions Late. of views as well as millions of dollars. So in this series, I'm going to look at the facts and figures behind some of the most successful YouTube series of all time and how they cause channels to go viral. In this episode, Content I'm going to take a look at one of the gods of YouTube gaming, Markiplier. Yeah, I think that is pretty interesting. I mean, I think most YouTube, I mean, that is pretty much for most people that starting off with something it is music it's art it's movies it's uh, well anything literally they often have this make something maybe a song an album a series a video and they just rise to start them through that the, not, the problem with that is that many times they are cursed by it as well you know because for example if you make an amazing album that sell like platinum and everything like wow, the next album people just expect it to be as good and better. So it can become quite a bit of a curse. The same thing with like, oh, uh, people, you're famous for Final Fantasy Freddy's. Well, you're playing other games. Well, that's no fun. We won't see Final Fantasy Freddy's and stuff like that, you know. Uh, for one for example, I will say is the Game Theorist. You know, Matt Patton Gang. Um, they really big grew thanks to the FNAF theories and stuff like that. 
And uh, they still do a lot of them, you know, because they know that is what the main base of their viewers want. And as said, I mean, as long as they enjoy it, I, that's 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 great, seriously. Though obviously, it is qu <laughs> quite a curse, you know. If they completely stop with that, they probably will lose a lot of subs. So, it, as said, it can be a blessing and a curse. Mark Fishback, also known as Markiplier, has been on the site since 2012. In that time, he's grown his channel to over 25 million subscribers and is considered by many as YouTube royalty. His channel built its success in the early days by Mark's playthroughs of... I mean, obviously it's a royalty. He's the king of squirrels, so... Uh, yeah. And I don't want to brag, but I'm king of bumblebees. I'm not really. I, I, I like bumblebees, though. I like bees. And, oh god, I love to actually, I actually like to watch these old Let's Plays of his, you know, the young player, I guess. Because <laughs> it, is, it is quite fun to see, actually, I like that. Indie horror games such as Amnesia, Penumbra and Dead Space. Over the next two years, his charming personality would bring him great success in the gaming community as he managed to gain just over 2.9 million subscribers. But despite already being an established channel, Markiplier was about to explode well beyond his wildest imagination. On August 12th, 2014, Markiplier uploaded a video titled Warning, Scariest Game in Years, Five Nights at Freddy's, Part 1. This series would go on to become one of the most successful in YouTube's history to date. And it's so cool. I love the editing. Seriously, J-Law, if you're watching this, you are fucking fantastic. I love it. And it's kind of funny because I actually remember watching this. His very I actually watch all his Five Nights at Video Five Nights at Videos. <sighs> I said my brain, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's videos, when I was working in in the in the um, in, with CNC and stuff and, and all that, and work night shift. And uh, when things were calm, I would go into the you know computers and sit there a little bit and watch his, his Five Nights at uh, FNAF, I'm gonna say FNAF, it's easier. And uh, yeah, so I actually watched those at work because I was like, oh, what is this? This game looks weird. How can this be scared? God damn it. And uh, I never managed to play through the games. I tried multiple times. I don't have the heart for it. Sir, I I'm not joking. I my anxiety, I can't handle it. The stress, the panic, I, I, I can't. I can't. For one billion... Markiplier is probably best known to many as a result of his Five Nights at Freddy's series. While it started in 2014, he does still occasionally upload videos playing the game even to this day. However, I'm specifically going to look at the success of this series only over the first year of when he started playing it. The reason for that is because after the first year of his Five Nights at Freddy's series, the videos of him playing the game became a little bit more sporadic and it was during those first 12 months that the series really helped his channel to blow up. So what is Five Nights at Freddy's? A place I don't want to go to. Got it. I know. I, I probably know too much about Five Nights at Freddy's than I should, thanks to like, well, Markiplier and the uh, Game Favors and stuff like that. Probably. Five Nights at Freddy's is an indie video game series designed and published by video game creator Scott Cawthon. The series is centered on the fictional Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Restaurant, which is a fictional pizza parlor similar to Chuck E. Cheese. The idea from the game stemmed from the negative reaction to Cawthon's previous game, the family-friendly Chipper and Sons Lumber Company. Oh, it was God. criticized for the unsettling appearance of its supposedly kid-friendly characters. I do you my love said I was very chill. <laughs> Oh god, I love that puns. I love the puns. Though I do agree, they look really creepy. I mean, it's easy to see where the animatronic style come from. So Cawthon decided to use the criticism to create an intentionally scary game, which would become Five Nights at Freddy's. The main player in the game is a nighttime security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Restaurant. The establishment has life-sized animatronic characters that wander the restaurant and become homicidal at night. 
In order to progress through the game, the security guard must protect himself from the animatronics with a variety of tools such as CCTV and security doors. However, if the player fails to prevent the animatronics getting into his office, they'll be jump scared and receive a game over. One of the earliest available videos on YouTube of a creator playing Five Nights at Freddy's comes from gamer DLive22891. He posted the video on the 6th of August 2014 and even received a comment under the video from the game's creator. At the time, DLive's channel had just over 100,000 subscribers, but it wasn't until a slightly bigger channel played the game that brought it to Mark's attention. OG YouTube gamer Yummymash uploaded his reaction to playing Five Nights at Freddy's on August 10th, 2014. This moment can perhaps be considered as the starting point that began the trend of gamers starting to play Five Nights at Freddy's. Yummymash and Markiplier were friends and frequent collaborators across each other's channel. As a result of seeing Yummymash playing the game, Markiplier decided to do the same. That is really... But I don't even know, is Yamamash still active on YouTube or anything? Because I, have, I haven't seen uh, in recent years uh, about any collab between Mark and him, you know? Because uh, the only time I see Mark play pretty much uh, collab now is like with the uh, Yaxeptic guy, um, Bob and Wade, and all of that. I do have no idea. Well, Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier, Markiplier. and welcome, welcome to Five to Nights at Freddy's. Freddy's, an indie horror game that you guys suggested en masse, and I saw that Yami Mass played it, and he said it was really, really good. So I'm very eager to see what is up, and that is a terrifying animatronic bear. Family Pizzeria looking for a security guard to work the night shift. The first video in the series surpassed 500,000 views within 24 hours. 82 million views?! Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. That's insane. My god. I mean, my highest viewed video have like 100,000 views. And in total, I think my channel like 3 million views. And on my entire channel over like uh, 5, 6 years. God damn. He continued to play the game over the next 10 days and would post a further four videos. It was obvious after a short period of time that all these videos were performing better than the other videos around them, as after the first two weeks, they'd all surpassed the million views mark. The simple suspense of the game, mixed in with Mark's over-the-top reaction, godlike voice and excitable narration, yeah. all helped the entertainment value and watchability of the videos. While other YouTubers tried their hand at replicating Mark's success over the next few months by playing Five Nights at Freddy's, oh none God. would be able to come close. Mark's series also spurned several spin-off videos on his channel related to the game to keep the momentum going. Five Nights at Freddy's Animated was a huge success, gaining over oh, 15 yes. million views in just over a month. I understand what I need to do. <laughs> I need to watch the cam so that they don't come after me. Oh, hi! I need to last till 6 I love eight. these. Oh, God, am I going to have enough power? <laughs> oh, God, I'm never going to make it because it's still there! <laughs> Indie Horror Let's Plays had become a huge subsection of YouTube at the time, and as a result of the success of Mark's <laughs> series playing Five Nights at Freddy's, he'd helped to boost the popularity Ooh. of the game around the world. Over the next nine months, Five Nights at Freddy's Part 2, 3, and 4 would be released. Mark continued to ride the wave of playing each series as soon as they were released, and as had come to be expected, they were hugely successful. In May of 2015, YouTube reported that viewing figures on Five Nights at Freddy's were in the platform's top 10 most watched playthroughs. When you consider a small indie horror game was up there with multi-million pound games such as Call of Duty, Minecraft and Grand Theft Auto, it's quite it incredible. Mark's is. impact on the game across the site was unlike anything that had been seen before. And while you can't say it was all as a result of Markiplier that Five Nights oh, at Freddy's yeah, became so popular, he absolutely played an integral part in why the game became so well liked. Once Mark had finished playing part four of the series and uploaded the animated version to go with it, it would be almost exactly one year since he uploaded the very first video of him playing the game. In that time, Markiplier's channel gained just over 6,428,000 subscribers. Even to this day, despite the fact that his channel has 25 million subs, he would never be able to replicate the success of the series or have a better year on YouTube by way of subscribers gained. This gives us an amazing insight into how successful and beloved the series was, and really the effect it had in turning Markiplier into a household name on YouTube. 
But perhaps what's most incredible is the viewing figures. During that year, Mark uploaded 42 videos related to Five Nights at Freddy's. And while these numbers are always changing, as of June 2020, those 42 uploads gained a combined total of just over 1,600,000 views. Since then, over the last five years, Mark God, that, that's 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 a lot. Oh gosh, I mean, as a small channel as I am, I can't even fathom that amount of uh, views. It is 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 it's insane. And I do agree. I mean, Mark is very talented in what he's doing, of course. And not to mention that I mean, sure, why they don't play much FNAF right now because there is nothing new at the moment. But as soon as there is, he's playing it. But he's doing a lot of other things that I think is pretty inter interest interesting, like the Unus Anus Anus kind of thing, whatever, you know, that channel he made with, um, is it Ethan Crank, Crank Gameplay? You know, all that stuff. And he made this, like, um, Who Killed Markiplier and uh, all of this stuff, which I think is just fucking amazing. And it's really fun to see. I think it's generally just cool to see that they how they can expand on stuff like this. Mark has still continued to play the game, but in most cases, other than the Sister Location series, he hasn't been able to quite replicate the same success mm. as the originals had. Markiplier's Five Nights at Freddy's series is possibly the most successful gaming series ever on YouTube. Most creators' legacies on the site are usually defined by their successful series and ends up becoming what they're remembered for. Without a shadow of a doubt, Markiplier will be remembered above all else for his Five Nights at Freddy's series, which was loved by so many. In the last episode, mm -hmm. I looked at how Shane Dawson was able to impact his own merchandise and products based off a successful series. Whereas I think in this case with Markiplier, it's a great example of how a YouTube series can impact another company or individual's product. Five Nights at Freddy's was pulling more watch time on YouTube than Call of Duty in 2015. Of course, other YouTubers were playing the game, which helped it grow in popularity, but without Markiplier's contribution, would Five Nights at Freddy's been as big as it was? I'll let you decide that one. Mm. That's it for this one. In the next episode, I'll be taking a look at whether PewDiePie was able to take Markiplier on in the battle for the most successful gaming series on YouTube by looking into his mm. hugely popular series on Minecraft. Hmm, that was interesting. And as the question, like, if Mark Pye wasn't the one, would the uh, Five Nights Fred been become as big as it was? And it is honestly really hard to say. I mean, it's easy that to say that it would have been someone else, you know? Someone else that played it and it exp exploded. But it can also be simply that, no, it wouldn't have taken off at all, actually. Simply because if they didn't get to, so to speak, right people... That, and that is the thing, you know, if I start let's play on a game, it doesn't explode. I'm way too small. I'm, 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 I'm a non-existing channel pretty much. But if someone like Mark played then that had like 2 million followers, well, uh, subs on YouTube, start to play. And considering his bombastic personality and of course, you know, people sharing. That helps a lot. I mean, it's do quite a lot to have that kind of reach. So I, I do think that it would probably grow quite big, but maybe in a different way, considering that, uh, yeah, you know, FNAF is very associated with uh, Markiplier and Game Favorites at this point, so. But yeah, this was awesome. Holy crap, I love this. And curious to see what else j -Law gonna do. So thank you for watching, and of course, remember to check out j -Law and subscribe to his channel. Thank you everyone, see you later on, and have a continued super great day.